a farm in the countryside that is hiding a secret. We've got a story for you today. Stephen Buchanan was born in California, United States on July 8th of 1948. He seemed to have lived an ordinary life and grew up to be a decent man who served in the United States Navy during the Vietnam War. After being honorably discharged, Stephen Buchanan began living life as a woman. From Stephen Buchanan to Susan Monica. In 1991, Monica purchased a 20-acre farm in rural Weimar, Oregon. Monica had a pig herd, raised poultry, and ran a wrought iron fence and gate building business called White Queen Construction. Monica's property was undeveloped woodlands when originally purchased. It became the main project in the coming years. A barn was built and a house was constructed. In 2013, Susan Monica needed help with the construction and advertised a job for a handyman on Craigslist. Then, through the ad, Monica was able to hire Robert Haney. Monica and Robert made a deal. Robert would receive a portion of the proceeds in cash and would be able to stay on the property. Robert agreed to construct a home from the ground up. Robert became her handyman, laborer, and carpenter. Robert did whatever was asked of him. It went extremely well. According to Jesse Haney, Robert Haney's son, his father enjoyed the peace and quiet of living alone in the woods. However, in December 2013, things got a little too quiet. Robert Haney's family had not heard from him in two months. On January 1st of 2014, the Haney children drove out to Monica's property to check on their father. When they spoke with Monica, Monica stated Robert hadn't been seen since he quit four months ago. The Haneys were shocked and confused. Monica even wanted Robert's children to come get their father's belongings. When the Haneys noticed Robert's trailer, that's when they knew something was wrong. His leather jacket was there, all of his tools were there, and his dog was still running around. That day, the Haneys filed a missing person report with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Robert had lived on cash, which made it tough to keep track of his whereabouts. However, they discovered that it had been months since anyone had seen Robert. Detectives drove out to Monica's property to ask about Robert's disappearance. Vehicles, rubbish, and improvised structures littered the site. When the detectives arrived at Monica's property, they felt like they were in the twilight zone. Monica told the detectives that Robert had lived and worked on the property for six months, but took a bad turn in the fall. Monica claimed Robert then began drinking heavily and acting erratically. Monica said he received a concerning phone call from a family member that she had been the victim of assault, and he was really upset about that. Then, Monica added that Robert eventually said he was going away for a while and asked her to look after his dog. With the ongoing investigation, Robert's Oregon Trail electronic benefits transfer card was tracked by authorities. They discovered it had been used the last time in December 2013 at a Walmart in Grants Pass, Oregon. Detectives then reviewed security camera footage, which showed Monica using Robert's EBT card. At this point, the detectives were starting to get concerned that there was some foul play involved. Law enforcement officers executed a search warrant on Monica's property, which comprised mountains of rubbish, rotting food, and industrial waste, shocked the officers. One of the officers describes the property as eerie, with a lot of odor and decay. Then, investigators spotted something truly disturbing, a human leg in a catchment pond. Detectives brought Monica into the sheriff's station for questioning. Monica told a bizarre and disturbing story. Monica claimed that one day, the previous fall, Monica found her pigs in a feeding frenzy. He was being eaten, what I believe to be alive, Monica told detectives during the interview. 
Monica couldn't stop the pigs, so Monica shot Robert instead. He was laying there, I was standing here, and I went like that, I pulled the trigger. Monica left Robert's body in the pig pen until the hogs had their fill. After a couple of days, Monica scooped up his remains and put them in garbage bags. Monica didn't report the event to the authorities, saying she was afraid that they would slaughter her pigs. Then it gets more disturbing. When detectives inquired what more they would find on the property, Monica sobbed and said they would find worse. Monica drew a map of the property and in the middle put an X, saying, right there, that's where you're going to find Steve. Steve was a handyman named Stephen Delcino who had worked on Monica's property for a year before Robert Haney arrived. They got into some sort of alleged wrestling match and the gun went off, shooting Delcino in the back of the head. Rather than killing him, Delcino stood up and chased Monica towards the barn, where Monica picked up the rifle, Monica was above him, and shot him in the head. Then, Monica fed Delcino's body to the pigs and later buried what was left. Before the questioning was over, the detectives asked Monica if there were any other dead bodies on the property. Then, Monica had a truly chilling response. Monica told the detective that if he were told about the 17 others, Monica expected the rest of their life would be spent in jail. On January 14, 2014, Monica was arrested, charged with two counts of murder and first-degree abuse of a corpse, as well as one count of identity theft. And the pigs were subsequently euthanized. With this arrest, Monica still has to go to court to face charges at trial. Over the following weeks, dozens of crime scene investigators searched Monica's property, but no other bodies. According to state police forensic anthropologist Veronica Vance evidence, Robert Haney was shot three to four times in the head. His legs had been hacked off with an axe, though it was unclear if this occurred before or after his death. At Monica's trial in April of 2015, Monica's former cellmate Jordan Ferris at the Jackson County Jail testified that Monica gave a birthday card signed, The Sweetest Murderer in Jackson County. The former cellmate then added that the card gave her chills and caused her nightmares. Then, Monica admitted to the detective in charge that Monica and Robert had gotten into the fight because Robert was drunk and trying to come on to Monica. Monica shot him and then pushed him into the pig pen. After an hour of deliberation, a jury found Susan Monica guilty on all counts. She was sentenced to a minimum of 50 years in prison. What are your thoughts about Susan Monica's story? Do you think there's 17 more bodies on the property? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care!